Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. And today, or tonight, depending on when you're watching, we are, um, we're gonna talk all about some spring, here's some flowers, like some spring open-ended art ideas that you can do in your classroom all spring long. So this would be great for like a spring theme, Easter, farm, plants, weather, bugs, um, St. Patrick's Day, kind of like a pond, all of those fun, really, really fun spring themes. I have some art ideas for all of them for you. Now about the links, links to all the things, there are links to this blog post that shows all of these um, in detail, tells you all the things. And then there's also a link to my TPT store that tells you where all the spring printables are. So we have the blog post and all the printables in case you want some printables to go um, in your center. So while you're doing some of these great open-ended art ideas. So first things first. See that thing behind me? The easel. Don't forget about the easel um, for spring. So, and, and you guys, I promise you it's low prep. So what I do is, is I take some real photographs. These are my STEM, I can build cards. And get, again, kids can't read. So it, it's okay if it says I can build tulips because we are just putting up some real photographs for them to look at, to inspire them um, as they're painting. Now, maybe you're doing birds, so you can have some birds pictures up, or maybe you're just doing spring in general or plants. Um, but you can just kind of, hope oh, you can't see it. Right here. So I have these little clips on my art easel. Now, I cover my art easel in a, like a shower curtain, so it's easier to clean because this has like a lip in it, and that's horrible to clean. And then I take a border, and laminate it and then I tape it on the sides because the, the middle is open so that way when kiddos put their paper on they can reach it because it's like they made these easels for kids in like fifth grade because they're so tall so just take your real photographs and I just typically clip them on the side you can put extras down there um and then I have my art easel routine which is free in my store and then it's just very inviting at the art easel now you don't have to use my stem, my stem pictures. Again, I'm big on like using what you already have prepped and printed. So if you have some of those prepped and printed, put one out at the easel. Um, if you have some calendar photos, put those up. If you have Google images, um, use that. And again, any real photograph, just put some at the easel. When I taught full day, I had a black metal um, storage cabinet right next to it. And I put pictures on magnets. So that way I had one on the easel and then they could switch it out if they wanted to. Um, and again, and it's just for inspiration. So if they wanna just paint because they love to paint and it's just like a hot mess painting and they're just painting because it feels good and they love it, that's great. But if they want to maybe paint a nest, maybe they'll just notice that, oh, there's lots of lots of lines on this nest or maybe, oh, there's, there's eggs inside or, oh, there's green, it's in a green tree. So maybe they're gonna draw it in a green tree. Now, they're not going to do a lot more with their painting, but they might notice one little detail because, and that little detail that they notice in the photograph, it might um, kind of open up all their background knowledge and just kind of get them thinking about what they're painting and all those simple shapes. So do that. And then I have, um, I use smaller brushes at my art easel. I keep them in there all week and then I wash them on the weekend or on, you know, on Friday and then I put them in there. And I mean, they're a little rough, but I don't have time to wash my brushes every week. So yeah, I just wash them um, on, on the weekends and then I put them back in on Monday morning and then a little baggy so I can put a lid on this on the weekend and then maybe put a little bit more paint in or just add to it so I'm not wasting paint all the time. Um, So this is the photo. So somebody couldn't see it. So again, and you can put up, maybe you're doing flowers. Maybe you're doing bees or bugs. Just put up whatever you're learning about and your students will be inspired. And then under my art easel, I have, you can't see it, but I have my art smocks in a bucket right underneath. So they're right there. They don't have to go to another place to grab them. Okay, so that is the art easel. Now, like I said, if you're, you can put up whatever you're learning about. I know a lot of kiddos love tractors. So when you're learning about farm, these are some that I have. These are just Google images. 
just some tractors. There's red, there's blue, there's green tractors. And I told you I kept it on, like I put a magnet on the back. And I just printed these out like with my school printer in color and then laminated it. Because look, you guys, there's like paint on the back. So they were really at my yard easel. And I would just literally put them up there. You can put it up there. And then, you know, they can be inspired to paint the tractors. Because kids who love vehicles um, may be more active learners. So they may not be, you know, super excited or interested in going to the easel. But if you put a tractor up there, they might be. So another fun thing you can do is make a mural. So I did this one year. Here's a picture of it. We made a giant mural. So as students came in in the morning, they got to pick something they wanted to make on the mural. One kiddo wanted to make a barn and they different kiddos made. We actually had two of them because I had 18 kiddos. So we had two giant pieces of butcher paper on one on each table and they got to come in and paint whatever they wanted on the barn. And I just had these that I had out. Um, I was using for library, but that way if they wanted to build a sheep, I could grab them this photograph, horse, duck, pig. Again, these are just set and strips that I put a little image on. So that way when they were making the pig, they could be like, oh, he has a head and pointy ears. So that way they could, you know, sometimes if they can't think of what that animal looks like in their brain, it's really hard to paint that. So give them an image. And again, it doesn't have to always be for art. I use these for the library center, but we use them as they made their, um, the mural. And then we hung it up on our bulletin board and it was really, a really great mural. Also, I have this, it says our farm mural. We worked as a team and painted a mural of a farm. These are free in my te um, on my blog, so I'll put the link for that um, in a minute. But you can make a mural, or they can each make their own, or you can make one giant collaborative one, whatever you wanna do. But farm is really fun to do um, paintings with. Now, you can also do still life paintings. So these are my flowers that I typically keep in my home living. I have water in it, which is, these are just those blue gems, and it's mostly so it keeps it from tipping over. Um, and then I have some flowers. Now, my cheat is, because again, I, I, I do try and make things, like if it's already prepped, I'm gonna use that. So if I have these paints at the easel, we're gonna pretend this is pink. I would try and put out the ones that matched. Um, we have some blue, so they can put the water in the vase and green. So I may put this in the middle of the table, put these all out, and then put a piece of paper at each spot. Whoops and they can paint the flowers. Now you could also put out a tractor, like from the block center, put that, and they could do a still life of the tractor. You could put out vegetables, um, put out, like if you're doing farm, you could put out different kinds of flowers, whatever flowers you're learning about, put those out. Um, you could also do, I like also doing still life with animal figures. So if your kiddos are really into like pigs or, um, what like bunnies or whatever like large animal figures you have in the block center put those at the table and then they can try and paint or draw that so if you don't want to put out the paints you could put out markers um, or markers and crayons so if you didn't want to do the paint you could oh my gosh <laughs> you could put out the markers and crayons and they could paint or draw um, sketches of whatever you have. Again, it could be flowers, it could be vegetables, it could be animals. Um, it's, it's really fun to do still life with um, figures. So, And here's one a kiddo made of this guy because this is the one I typically have in Home Living. So, so fun. All right, I'm gonna put these back. Actually, I'm gonna move them up here because we're gonna be using those for all the things. finger painting. I know you're thinking like it's a mess and we've done it all year and they're bored with it. So why not make it about the theme you're doing? So here's one I had. So this is, this was our um, chicken painting. Now they weren't actually using their fingers. They were using these chickens. Um, and I'll kind of show you, hold on. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have I'll just do it on like a half sheet. So we have some white paper. 
This is what a kiddo's turn out like. I'll put it at an angle so you guys can see. And what they can do is you can put out, oh, that's not yellow and green. So what they do is they can squirt the paint on there because the ground is like hay and chickens like to go in the grass. And then, oh my gosh, look, this one still has paint in it. <laughs> look at that. So instead of using their fingers, they're kind of just using these chickens and they're just gonna smoosh it around. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. And then I had out some corn because chickens like to eat corn so they could put it in the painting and they could move it around just to give it a little bit of texture and really, really fun. And they ended up looking like this. This is my own kiddos. Um, I had my own child in my class and then I had put it in a, um, what is it, a page protector and put it in their portfolio and you can see some of the corn has come off but it was painted and stuck on and it was so much fun. Um, but again, so fun, so simple and they are kind of finger painting but just using this little chicken and look, when they hold this, this one has paint on it, but when they hold the chicken, it's helping that pincer grasp. But maybe they're not really excited about chickens. Maybe you, you could do pigs in the mud and give them a little pig figure, give them brown paint and put out a little bit of dirt and they could smush the paint pig around. They could even make, make the pig roll in the paint or the mud and then they could put the real dirt in there. Um, you could do it with any animal, it doesn't have to be farm. You could even do it with like bugs and they could, um, whether they're in the sky, maybe you're gonna give them blue paint and maybe some glitter or white for the clouds and they can fly around. Um, but again, we're just exploring paint and having so much fun. <laughs> So yeah, so you can do chickens, you can do pigs, you could do um, animals that are at a pond, or um, you could do bunnies or animals that are like in the woods too, like your springtime animals, or butterflies would be fun. So that's another fun one you can do. Now this one is a classic because I feel like we all do this one. We do the stamping, right? So here is one, try. Um, and this is how I keep my things I use for stamping. So I typically wash them because I can't really use them for anything else. Like you can see that one's got a little bit of paint on it. Um, and then if you are bothered by always using a bunch of paper plates, use these plastic ones from the Dollar Tree and then you can wash them. So cut out all your, all your plates of paint. I typically do the same color, so the purple would have purple paint. And then it's really fun too. I cut these off of a wreath, so that way, listen, it makes a really fun noise. Um, but that way they have like little twigs. These are, again, I just cut this off of a wreath. Um, and they can just print in the paint, stamp, stamp, stamp. And again, these are great. Keep the stems on there because they can hold with their pincer muscles and stamp. Or if you pull these off, Sometimes they're hard to hold and a kiddo won't, some kiddos won't want to hold with their fingers all messy. Um, depends on if they like sensory and messy things or if they don't. But if you keep the stems on, the kids who don't like to make a really big mess and don't like that texture all over their hands, they can still participate without making the mess, without having um, sensory overload, right? And then again, I typically wash them. I leave them out to dry and then we can use them the next day or the next year next time and then I literally keep them in a baggie with this is how I keep my art projects so I keep my sample or maybe one a kid made me I keep that one and I keep it in a baggie with whatever I use that maybe I won't ever use again um and I keep it in a bag and I put it in my like this one was in my plants um theme box and then I put it in there and it's ready to go so that's that and you can tell I use these plates over and over because look how scratched they are. They're not, they're not super clear anymore, but they're great because you can like wash them. And if you leave them in the sink overnight, sometimes like I do, they'll be fine. They won't rust or anything. So, birds. Who loves learning about birds in the spring? Whether it's like backyard birds or um, maybe, you're, maybe you hatch chicks um, or maybe you're doing like zoo animals and you're learning about all the different birds. So, another thing you can do is put your paint in little cups. 
And then if you have lids for these, these are great because then you can keep them again. Um, but again, I do one color and do the same one. I'm just gonna paint on top of this one, I'll be fine. <laughs> and then they just paint on it again. And then they can dip it in and paint, paint, paint. This was my sample that I made, so it's okay. <laughs> and then again, dip, 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 and paint. And look how gorgeous this looks. Now, sometimes when you send stuff like this home, families are like, I don't know what this is, <laughs> right? Um, they're like, okay, that that's so beautiful. They love it, it's gorgeous. But if you can see on mine, I have some feathers stuck in it. Now paint kind of works like glue. So after they're done, you can let each kiddo, or they can pick a couple of feathers and they can smoosh it in, kind of like the corn on the other one, but they can stick a couple of feathers on there. We'll just put that one on there. So we'll pretend, put that one in there. And that way that one is stuck. And then, then families, and they will remember too what, what they painted with because it's literally stuck in there. So. So fun, and again, we're just exploring paint, and as they paint, again, we're using that pincer muscle, which is a great way to develop that pencil grasp and those fine motor muscles, and they're using their hand and their wrist and their upper arms, so lots and lots of fine motor strength happening, and a gorgeous, gorgeous art project. So, paint with feathers. And then they can stick some in there. All right, put those up there. We're gonna keep keep talking about painting because I love doing um, paint. Oh, and um, I typically, if like um, if it's a little feather like this, I usually try and wash this. Um, I try and wash and save everything, especially like like the big giant feathers. I actually keep a baggie of those in my art cabinet because those I think are kind of expensive. So I literally wash them and I keep them again. Cause if you're just gonna paint with it again, year after year after year, it's okay if it's not like, it doesn't look gorgeous anymore, I guess, because you're just gonna paint with it. It's just gonna be covered in paint again. So again, I will try and wash these and then I'll keep them for next year. So again, I'm not like being super, super wasteful. So another fun thing you can paint is a pond. So here's one. And then here's another one. So for these, what I typically do is again, use what I got. Where's the other one? There's that. So I put out a couple different colors of blue and maybe a green. And then first thing they do is paint. They cover the whole thing in paint. And then I pre-cut. So I would have these out on the table as well. These are just little lily pads that I cut from like um, that birthday crepe paper. Just a whole bunch of ovals. Now, are, are theirs gonna look like mine? Probably not, and you know what, that's okay because it's open-ended. If they don't wanna stick any on there, that's okay. If they wanna stick a bunch on there, that's awesome too. Um, and then I have flowers, so what they're gonna do is they can crinkle these up and put them on the lily pads. Now, since there's paint, you typically don't need glue. You can put out a bottle of glue, but you typically don't need it. And again, if they want to use these, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. If they want to crinkle these up and put them in there, they can do that. It's open-ended. They can use, this is the intent, but if they if theirs turns out totally different than mine, that's fine. If they paint on top of these, that's okay too because it's open-ended and I want them to make it how they see, how they interpret it, right? Also, it's also really helpful, just like we said with the still life, um, to put out a real photograph. And again, I, I just had these printed already, but anything I do in art, I typically like to laminate it. But if you don't have time to laminate it, just stick it in a page protector. And so now you can be like, look, we are going to paint, you can paint lily pads in a pond. Well, they may never have seen a lily pad because maybe they're three or maybe they're five. And maybe they don't, they've never been to a pond in real life. So put out the photo of what, a pond is or a lily pad. You can even put out like, I have this one out that I would put out too. And then they can make their pond or their lily pads on, in their pond. And again, they can make it, they can have it look like mine. 
Um, I typically show them what mine looks like and then I typically put it away because I don't want everyone to turn out like mine. I want them to make it how they want to. Um, so yeah, so make some ponds. And the ponds are great for if you're doing like a whole pond theme. Um, that's really fun. Um, so, and again, I use these little plates for so, so many things. And again, if I already have these out of the art easel, why make something else dirty? So, marble rolling. We all do marble rolling all the time, right? Well, let's do it with an Easter or egg twist. Now, if you can't do Easter, it's okay. You can do this when you're learning about birds or maybe you're hatching chicks. Um, so grab some Easter eggs. What I forgot to do is grab some marbles. So these typically won't roll really well. So I typically grab marbles or maybe like a larger bouncy ball, stick it in there. So that way there's some weight to it. And then I have some eggs pre-cut. So they grab their eggs. And you can do this two different ways. You can have cups of paint and they, like maybe you have these cups and you have like, like maybe you have one cup, one cup for each color and they have to grab it and then put, put it back in with a spoon or something. Or you can do the little, um, little, what are they called? Little squirt bottles and you can have them squirt on here. All the different colors. And these little squirt bottles, I just got these from Discount School Supply. Nothing crazy fancy. Um, I think they have them on like Amazon too. Um, I love these because they're not putting out a ton of paint. You can make the paint thick, you can keep it thick, you can make it watered down. Um, kind of do whatever you want, but it kind of controls how much paint they're using, which is great. But now my eggs don't have the marbles in them, like I said, so they're, what's gonna happen is, whoops, they're gonna stick a little bit, but we're gonna try it anyway. See how they roll, but they're kind of getting stuck. They don't move really fast. If you put a little bit of weight in them, they'll move a lot. And they are just going to shake. Now, as you see me shake, do you see what I'm moving? I'm moving my upper arms, I'm using my shoulders. Shake, shake, shake. Like, and they'll go crazy and shake, shake, shake. And throw things, no, no, okay. That was just me and my table's a mess. And they can shake it, they can shake it on the table. And what else are they doing? They're doing lots of problem solving, right? Because how can I move the box to make the eggs move the way I want them? Maybe I want the eggs to go this way. So I'm gonna take it this way, cause and effect. All kinds of science, physics, all kinds of things happening here. And then look, here's my beautiful egg. How pretty, okay, and I, I didn't cut the best egg, but <laughs> it's okay. Like how, it kind of looks like a potato. So maybe cut your egg a better shape than mine, but how cute is that? And again, the eggs are just in there, totally fine. And then the next person can go and go ready. And they can, again, you can have them squirt the paint in there or you can put it in cups, whatever you want to do. Here's some that kiddos made in the past. Here's another one. Again, how fun are these? And again, you can do this for an Easter theme. You can do it for hatching chicks. So if you can't do Easter, it's okay. I got you. you um, do it when you're doing birds or chicks. Gonna keep keep the fun going. Okay, more paint. Because I love paint. So when you're doing bugs and butterflies, butterflies have symmetry, right? So pre-cut some butterflies. I always fold them and then I cut to make sure they're the same on both sides. Also, we're doing smash paintings. So when they smash them, what's going to happen? They're gonna look they're gonna, it's gonna be easy to fold in half because why? Because you already pre-folded it for your kiddos. Now I know you're thinking, oh, it's probably easy for my kiddos to fold paper. That's tricky, <laughs> especially if it's like covered in paint. Now you would do this part after they're dry. I don't, where's my tape? But 
I'll show you what they look like. So I would have my my little paint bottles out, and you're gonna they can squirt on one side. So fun. And again, great fine motor as they're squishing. If you notice your students are squeezing a lot of paint out of these, um, add a little bit of glue, it'll make it a little bit thicker. Um, you have to shake it to the bottom. Okay, all right. So we squish it all out and then I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna smoosh it. Now, when you're smooshing it, Look, I'm using my fingers and I'm smashing it. So lots and lots of great fine motor work. I'm having to hold it with this side to smash with this side. So both sides of my body are working together. Again, all of these skills, these are all pre-writing skills, right? Because students have to have strong fine motor. Both sides of their body have to be able to work together in order for them to write. So art is basically a giant, giant pre-writing skill, right? And then they're going to open it up. Look, look how gorgeous. And then you would tape, I'm gonna push it back on the table so you can kind of see. But you would tape that onto the back afterwards. And look, it's so pretty. I mean, come on, so, so gorgeous. Can you, so um, one year for graduation, like if you make a graduation backdrop, have each kiddo make one of these. You can literally just like, um, if you want to put curtains up or maybe you just put up some blue paper for the background, make a bunch of these. So gorgeous. Cause when kiddos graduate, they take, they have wings and they, they're going to go places, right? They're going to, they're going to spread their wings and go do all these amazing things. So this is the best decor for your backdrop for when they're all in their little graduation gowns. So cute. Okay. So smash butterfly paintings. Got that one. All right. So I know a lot of us, when we do farm, we don't think about using potatoes, but potatoes grow underground. I love the book, The Enormous Potato. It's one of my, I know everybody loves The Enormous Carrot. I love The Enormous Potato too. So take some potatoes. These are those like tiny ones. This is like a sorting tray. You can either cut them long ways or cut them so they're vertical, I guess. Horizontal and vertical. And then they are just going to stamp the potatoes. They are just going to st stamp them. Now, you can tell this one doesn't stamp as well. You have to cut them kind of very, um, you have to cut them very, very, like, um, flat. If there's any, like, little divot in your cutting, you'll see it. Now you can see I'm twirling it. Look at all that wrist strength or that wrist action I'm doing here. So, so fun. But I mean, how much fun is this? Woo, I splashed. I mean, and when I grab this potato, look, I'm having to hold on to it with my fingers. So I'm using my finger muscles and my pincer muscles. And I, when I push down, I'm using my shoulder all kinds of good things happening, guys. Look, but then also look at all this amazing art and printing. Oh my gosh, look. So gorgeous. Potato. Here's one a kiddo made from a couple years ago. Sometimes if they make two, I ask them if I can keep one because let's be honest, families don't want like, want like six potato paintings. So sometimes I'll keep one. This is Tristan's. Um, so yeah. So typically also, um, just a random thought when, so I know everybody's like, well, when do you do, um, open-ended art? So each week for my art center, I have one new open-ended art activity. Um, so like maybe this week it's potato printing. So I have this out at the table and then student, and maybe some, maybe I'll have two pieces of paper. And so students can do that. And then the other half of the table is open. So if they want to do anything else in art, they can't, so like they can always choose anything from my other art tables. And then if they need more space and they want to move this, I typically have one of my shelf next to my Play-Doh tray. That spot is empty. And that is where this, the open-ended art activity of the week, that's where its home is. Now also, like I said, I do keep things. So if we're doing this like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I will cover this with saran wrap and I'll put it in the fridge and then I'll use it the next day. Or 
I take the potatoes out or if I'm painting with vegetables or fruit, I'll take these out at the end of the day and I'll wash them and put them in the fridge <laughs> because I keep them for the next day because I don't want to use like a bag of potatoes if I'm doing it all week. I want to like try and keep and use less things. Also, if I'm doing potato printing and maybe like the, I used it two days and the, en the end of the potato, like this part's kind of yucky. I'll just cut a little bit more and then I'll have fresh potato to use again because again, I don't want to be wasteful, especially when I'm using food. Um, so yeah, so I typically will try and keep it. And the feather painting too, I'll put lids on it, wash the feathers um, and use it the next day. So again, I can get more, lots and lots of uses out of um, one prepped activity. this one next okay so I love painting with marshmallows I like to make it into a math activity like um one year I found flower um marshmallows and I'm for math um we were doing patterns and I made this into a math activity now this is math we're not doing math but I just wanted to tell you that they do some some years make flower marshmallows like these are from last year, but they're the Lucky Charm marshmallows. But my favorite marshmallows are peep marshmallows. Now, on my blog, I do have a peep taste test freebie. So if you want to do that for science, awesome. It's so fun. Now, these peeps I actually bought last year on clearance because I typically use stuff like this for art. Um, I know I always do marshmallow stuff in art. So these are not super squishy. They're a little bit, um, but like this one, kind of hard. So what you're going to do, if you buy yours this year, take them like um, individually, take, take them apart, leave them out the night before, whether it's at home or at school, leave them out. And then by the next day, they'll be kind of hard and they won't be so squishy and um oh like um squishy and gushy and sticky um they'll kind of have develop a nice little hard co coating on the outside so then what you can do and you can use bunnies you can use whatever fun um whatever fun um marshmallow they have out but so they're going to stamp them but look how fun that is. So you got little bunnies. And again, if, if you can't do Easter, it's okay. Um, and they do have a really fun texture because of the sugar. And you shouldn't get bugs. Um, and again, you can make this into a math activity. This one's more squishy than the other one. Now, if you have like the blue one, so that way that you can have bunches of colors, great. If you only have two colors, that is okay too. And then if you want to be like extra fun, they, you can put out some glitter because you know, the sugar isn't sparkly enough and they can put glitter on their peeps. But look, so obviously they would probably do a lot more, right? Like they would go a little more crazy than I did. Or maybe they wouldn't, who knows? But, oh my gosh, you guys, how much fun is that? So, so fun. And again, you can use glitter. You can not use glitter. You can use two colors. You can use, you can get more, whatever you want to do. And you can also do, you can make this into a math activity if they really love it and they can do patterns. But that's not for art. We did this in art. We're just stamping and exploring and loving, just exploring um, printing. So we got some peak printing. We move these over here. So this is your um, your reason to go out and buy all the holiday marshmallows because <laughs> it's so much fun. So I have some 3D art I want to show you. So one year, actually, this was not my idea. Um, a student made these in my art center all on her own. I didn't even prompt her. So what she did was she took a piece of green paper. Oh no, I don't think I have tape over here. Okay, 
We're going to make it work. We will figure it out. So we have, so she rolled it up. Oh, let me show you my, my materials here. So I have green pieces of paper and then I have um, like slices of paper and then I have little green pieces because you'll need that for, for the stems. So you cut it like this and then you would tape it. But um, yeah, I can't reach the tape right now. So we're gonna make it work like this. It's fine, <laughs> everything is fine today. All right, and then what they do is they need to make the flower top. So you're gonna take a piece of paper and they're just going to cut, cut, cut. So these are really great to make if you have a Mother's Day or some kind of um, muffins in the morning. These make really great flowers to give to their person so you don't have to go out and buy flowers. They can make them and then you're gonna roll it. Oh gosh, guys. So this is rolled up and taped. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna stick this on the inside. So I'm gonna fold it like this to the bottom so it works because I forgot the tape. <laughs> okay, and then they can kind of like curl it down. And then they would tape around the edge. See that's how this fine little taped around the edge. See all the tape, so much tape. And then they can cut their leaf. So they can either, what they, um, my, uh, the kiddo who, this idea this was, she drew a leaf on there first and then she would try to, um, they would cut it out. And then tape it on. Now it could have one leaf, like this friend could have two. They can do whatever color they want to do. You see how these leaves are look very different? Um, they cut like a C and glued it on. This one's more like a actual like pointy oval. But these are so fun for um, a 3D art. And again, if you're doing muffins in the morning or like a graduation um, or parent-teacher conferences, these, put these like in a little vase or a little pot and they make really cute centerpieces because the kids made them. Um, these are these are really fun. And um, it's a flower that families can keep forever. So it's nice. I still have mine that um, my kiddo made me. Um, which, are, which are these? <laughs> Austin made me these. Um, but like I said, this was a, 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 something that a kiddo made in my class one year. And that's the reason right there to make sure that you always have an art center and you don't have a have to. They can just go to art and create because this little friend would have never created this beautiful 3D flower if she couldn't just go to art and create. So yes, I always have an open-ended art activity out, but they can always use anything they want and make something um, in art. Now, if you're doing a bulletin board or something, you can always do the art activity for small group. Um, or for table time, but always make sure they can do anything in the art center if, they're, if their heart desires. Again, this is how I keep my art activities. So this one, I pre, I tore long strips of green paper because tearing paper is hard. So I did it for my kiddos and then I had cut tissue paper and then what they did was they made a garden. So they had to take this and tear it more. So maybe they tore it in half or maybe they tore, tore a piece for a leaf and then they could crumble up the flowers and make, um, make the, um, crumble up the tissue paper for the flowers. So we got a great little open art, open-ended art activity there. Um, so yeah, again, this is mine, none, none of theirs will look like mine. They had some flowers down at the bottom and at the top and not connected. And maybe they just had like five stems. They can do whatever they want. But it's a really fun um, little flower garden with torn paper. Um, and again, make sure you pre-tear some strips. But I tore them long, I tore the green paper long ways 
So that way they had to tear them more. Um, so that way they were tearing, but I have helped a little bit by pre-tearing them. And also, if you ever see my paper that's super bright and vibrant, I I do, like this is Astro Bright paper because I feel like um, construction paper some kind is like a little faded and not so bright. So you can also use Astro Bright paper, which I know is for like copying and printing, but it's really pretty to use um, if you're doing some art activities as well. So I love making like poofy, um, puffy paint. So why not make a storm? So how you make puffy paint in this dry, this is dry, but look, you can see how it's like puffy. But look at that really cool texture. It's still like kind of squishy. So you take shaving cream, shh, swish it together, white glue, and then mix it up. And then I typically do some kind of like larger brush like this. So that way they can kind of like scoop it out and kind of like dollop it. And so that way it's kind of a bigger brush. So one of these like bigger brushes I would use or for um, uh, puffy paint. And then, or if you have any like um, those like basters that you use for, um, they're really for like basting like meat. Those are great to use with um, puffy paint because they're kind of like, they have bigger bristles. So those are really fun to use too. And then I put out um, paint sticks, which is just temper paint sticks. And I put those out so that way they could make lightning. I don't know if you can see it. Do you see the raindrops they made? Can you see them? Look how fun are those? So fun. So I put out blue paper and they got to make their, their storm. You can add glitter, not add glitter, whatever your heart desires. So, storm painting. Just another fun one. All right. Oh gosh, I kind of, I, I gotta go on this side now, but I kind of made a stack over there. So hold on one second. I gotta, I gotta rearrange for a minute, hold on. Okay. All right, so. We are doing, oh shoot, I forgot my straw. Okay, it'll be fine. All right, so we are doing wind painting um, because blowing wind is a great thing we talk about during like a weather unit or in the spring because sometimes it gets really windy and it blows the umbrella because um, some spring storms are kind of crazy sometimes, right? It's super, super windy or like around tornadoes, super windy. So what I had students do was with a black Sharpie. So, you know, be careful. If you're worried about using a Sharpie, you can totally use a, um, like a black washable marker. Just know it will run on the second part, but you know, if you need to use these because you have littles that may color their clothes, totally fine, use a washable marker. So all they're gonna do is draw the wind, draw crazy curly, circle wind and they can just draw it however they want. They can draw blowing all around. And then what they're gonna do is use liquid watercolor paint and they are gonna, oops, let me get a tray here. Cause this will make a mess. If I don't. So I got my tray. Woo. And then they're going to drip it on. Okay, one trick I have, if your kiddos dump, I, I don't think I've shared this in a while, put your paint in a, um, in a muffin tin. So if you have twos or younger threes, you can put your paint cups in a, um, a muffin tin because this has liquid watercolor in it. So what I did was I put some liquid watercolor in the bottom of the cup and I put some, and probably equal parts water, equal parts liquid watercolor and I, it's hard to tell what color the liquid watercolor is. So you can put it in colored cups. And then I found these really cool colored droppers at, um, you know, Amazon. Um, so that way they can squish it in there. And then what they're gonna do is, hopefully I, we're gonna have to pretend here because I forgot a straw. So normally you would want a straw and they would, blow it. We're just going to kind of pretend. <laughs> so 
they blow with the straw, not like, not like that. That won't work. So when they have the straw and they blow it, it blows more like a spider. So it'll look like this. So have a cup of straws out so that way each student has their own. If they're having trouble blowing the wind through the long straw, cut your straw in half um, because um, that just means they have weaker oral, oral motor muscles. Um, so cut the straw in half so they have less, they don't have to produce as much wind or as big of a breath to get that wind, that breath all the way out the end of the straw so they can use a half straw. Or those like milk straws are great if you have those in your cafeteria. You can put those out in one for each kiddo and they can blow the liquid watercolor and it goes everywhere. So try that. It's really, really fun. But it's a great way to sh like talk about um, like the wind blowing and they can be the wind and blow the paint everywhere. Um, and like the, like the windy day, I think that's the windy day book. Um, it's really fun to kind of go with it. So we can also talk about color mixing. So if you're doing color mixing, you would just need out yellow, blue, and red. And then you would grab, these are just paper towels, the ones that are cut in like thirds, or I guess, I don't know. I always think this is like a third size, I don't know. Um, it's probably like a half of a normal paper towel size. And then they're just going to squirt it on and watch the colors mix. Because as the blue and the yellow mix here, you can see we have some green and we have orange up here. Um, this one's obviously dry, so I already did this one. But it's really, really gorgeous and pretty. When you're doing color mixing, make sure you have either like a white, you can laminate white um, paper and put it underneath or put it on like a clear tray so it's kind of white-ish. And then you can always put like a, um, a white tablecloth like those cheap plastic ones at the Dollar Tree, put a white tablecloth over the table because if you are doing this on your wood table or on a colored tray, they won't really see all the beautiful colors and how they mix together. So put um, a white tablecloth down or like um, a whitish tray so they can really see those beautiful colors mix. To, to keep talking about a windy day, they can also make wind socks. Now, this little friend, she drew a rainbow on hers. Most kiddos just painted the outside. So I put out all the colored paint. Again, I often grab paint from the Artie Soul. Oh, I do it a lot. And then I get each kid one piece of paper and they can paint whatever they want on there. This friend painted a rainbow. <laughs> okay, or if you have them paint a rainbow, um, like they can paint whatever they want. So you pick whatever you want. You can have them paint a rainbow or they can just paint using all the colors of the rainbow. And then when it's dry, they can cut. This is my little basket of crepe paper from the Dollar Tree. So they cut one of each color. This little friend didn't cut purple, she picked pink. Um, and they staple them, or wait, wait, sorry. We glued them. So they glued them to the bottom and then I stapled them together and then we had these gorgeous wind socks. And then we took them outside and they got to run with them and watch the, um, the tails of the wind socks kind of float, float in the wind. Make some wind socks. Again, have them paint a rainbow or they can paint whatever they want. Um, and then you can make your wind socks. And then last but not least, let me move this for one second. We have one of my favorite things. Liquid starch and wax paper. So this is liquid starch. This is what I actually use to make um, slime. This is it, get it at Walmart. That's the cheapest place to get it. It's just liquid starch. It's in like the laundry aisle. Okay, that's it right there. And then get some wax paper and they are going to, oh my gosh, hit it, itch on my head. I don't have the wax paper over here. I'll use um, this clear plate to kind of show you guys. 
But what happens is, is they're gonna use the liquid starch like glue. Now, don't, <laughs> um, it's, it's like glue. So if you keep your paintbrushes in here, like for a day or two, they're gonna get hard as a rock. So make sure you wash these brushes at night. So put it on there, but it's it kind of makes the tissue paper, like, and this is just regular tissue paper. It's not like the bleeding tissue paper. If you got the bleeding tissue paper, it would really bleed and um, like the colors would really mix a lot more, but this works too. And it kind of blends together. Do you see it? I'll put, a, I'll put a yellow one on there too. So you can kind of see it. Do you see how, ooh, it's liquidy. But it kind of like melts the tissue paper. So it looks like this at the end and it's really pretty. You could also do just the cool colors one day. You could also do just the warm colors one day. You could cut these out into like different shapes. So you could put out um, like um, St. Patrick's Day colors and then cut it out as a shamrock or cut, pre-cut your wax paper into the shape of a shamrock and do like, um, like orange and green. They could make shamrocks, put it in flowers, whatever you want, hearts. Yeah, whatever makes your heart, you can make clouds, whatever makes your heart happy. But you can also just cut it into a long rectangle and it's still gorgeous. It's really, really pretty when the sun shines through it, um, when it's sunny. So those are a lot, a lot of open-ended art activities. But I wanted to remind you, I know it's always like a big debate, right? Open-ended art like open-ended art, like process art versus product art. This is product art because they all turn out the same. Um, now, I know some of mine, like the pond one, if you make each child, here, let me show you. Like this one, you could say that this is more product art because I showed an end example and the, I had the lily pads and the flowers on top. But if you put out the materials and they make whatever they want, then it's more process, right? Because then maybe they don't use the lily pads. Maybe they paint the lily pads. Maybe they put all of it together in the middle in a big clump. Maybe they put it on the outside. Maybe they don't use parts of it at all. And again, maybe they paint over all of it. Um, then it would be process. If it is cookie cutter and everybody's looks the same, this is product art. Now this to me is more of a fine motor fine motor activity because they are using their cutting skills. This is a fine motor activity where they cut the pieces and make the flower. This is a fine motor activity. Directed drawing where they are following the steps to draw a figure. This has a purpose too, but that's not like process art. A name collage, or I guess a name cutting craft. This is an art. This is a fine motor um, name activity, right? There is room for this and this. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm trying to grab one. Sorry, if it's dry. <laughs> and this. There is room for all of these things in your classroom. You just have to make sure you balance it out, right? Like you don't wanna, like sometimes, it's okay to have a fine motor craft in the art in the art center, but we always want to make sure we don't forget about the process and the open-ended art because again, this is important. This is following directions. It's learning how to draw all the different shapes, but this is really important too. This is more of a small group or a center activity. This is art. So, just a little food for thought. I know everyone. A lot of people debate there isn't room for both. I think there's room for both. Um, you kind of have to balance it just like you balance everything else, right? You need to do lots and lots of academic, but we also need lots and lots of play. So how can we find that nice balance, right? Um, so I think in art, it's the same thing. There's product art and there's process art, but there is a place for both things in, um, in your art center. So, 
just a little food for thought. Um, but all of these ideas are in the blog post for you guys. So find the link and go grab it. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Also, there is um, there will be a blog post for each season for all these um, fun process art ideas. So if you need ideas, you can hop over there. Um, so yeah, so I hope you guys have an amazing evening or day, depending on when you're watching. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.